Getting your foot in the door for your first job as a fashion design student can be really hard. Without having any experience, it can feel like you send out hundreds of resumes and portfolios and you don't hear anything back. It's like your stuff is going into a black hole, but it's not your fault because as a fashion design student, they don't really teach you this stuff in school. You learn how to design, but a lot of what fashion school is lacking is teaching you the skills to actually land a job, which is why in this video, we're gonna go through three strategies that you can implement today to land your dream fashion design job even if you're a fashion design student and don't have any experience. You'll also learn the proven strategy to turn a fashion design internship into a full-time job. I'm So Heidi, founder of Successful Fashion Designer, and I teach you real world skills that you need to get ahead in the fashion industry that you don't learn in fashion school. A lot of people don't talk about this stuff, so I like to call it fashion industry secrets revealed. <laughs> Advice in these videos isn't just stuff that I've made up. It's stuff that I've learned over a decade of being a designer, as well as things that I've learned from doing over 75 interviews with fashion professionals on my podcast. These designers have worked for brands like Mavi Jeans, Theory, and Puma. I've handpicked their best advice from the podcast interviews and packaged them up into these short videos for you. All the podcast episodes mentioned are linked below in case you wanna check out the full interview. But for now, let's jump in. Real life advice for fashion design students. How to break into the fashion industry after college, even if you have no experience. Strategy number one is to show real life and commercial work in your portfolio. Now, I know this might come off a little contradictory, you're thinking, but I don't have the experience, so where am I supposed to get this work from? I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do that. Now, the big concept behind this strategy is the difference between showing schoolwork in your portfolio versus showing real life work in your portfolio. It's the difference between showing conceptual projects versus commercial projects. And this is a topic that comes up so often on the podcast. The example that I wanna share right now is from Shelly Simpson in episode 53. Shelly manages the entire recruiting department specific for the fashion industry at Atrium Staffing, a recruiting agency in New York City. And she sees hundreds, if not thousands, of applications for design jobs. But Shelly has the upper hand of being in direct contact with the brands in a recruiting position. And so she knows inside and out from firsthand experience what brands wanna see in your portfolio and application. She shares that the biggest mistake fashion design students make in their portfolio is showing too much school work and too many school projects. Their books are usually full of designs they've sewn themselves and pictures that their friends have taken in their apartment or backyard. Now, I don't wanna discount the work that you've done in school and the value that you've gotten out of this very expensive education, but it is not always the best idea to include all your school projects in your portfolio. So what do you do instead? I'm gonna let Shelly tell you in her own words. So I think it's important to have some of your schoolwork in there, but anything you can take from an internship is gonna be key. Um, and it, that's gonna be some of the basics. They just wanna know that you have the systems, especially if you're gonna be going to a corporate or mass market company, that you've worked in Photoshop and Illustrator. They're gonna wanna see some of your flat sketching. Um, they're also, for assistant designers, really gonna wanna know if you're able to do tech packs. We've talked about the importance of Illustrator sketching and tech packs in other videos. But if you can show some examples of that work from real life experience at an internship in your portfolio, that's gonna make a huge difference. And like Shelly said, even if it's just some of the basics that you worked on, it's better to show that than a book full of just schoolwork. Now you might be wondering, what's the etiquette on including work when you only did parts of the project? Well, I answer that question and tons more about your portfolio in my free ultimate guide to portfolios. You can check that out now. But first I wanna share another piece of advice from another interview from a very successful designer. And this will answer the question of what do you do if you don't have an internship? What kind of work are you supposed to show in your portfolio then? You can still see success and you can still land your dream job, which is exactly what Carla Louise Stout did. Carla's worked for brands like Mavi Jeans and her work's been featured in publications like Vogue and In Style. And in episode 60 of the Successful Fashion Designer podcast, I interviewed her where she shared some amazing advice. Carla's been working in the industry for 15 years and she's had a very 
amazing career trajectory. But it didn't start off this way. When she first was breaking into the industry out of fashion design school, she applied for over 20 jobs and did not get an offer. The brands kept saying, we can't hire you because you don't have any experience. Or they kept offering her unpaid internships, which was not an option. She had bills and rent to pay. So Carla took a step back and she looked at her portfolio and she realized that all the projects that she was showing were school projects from university. And she analyzed the designs. They were very conceptual and artistic. And she did something really smart. She thought, what do brands really wanna see? What is actually being produced in the marketplace? It is commercial driven designs. It is not conceptual driven artistic designs. So she did a few self-directed projects on her own that were more commercial, that were more like what brands were actually producing and selling. And she put those in her portfolio almost immediately she landed her first job. So what can you do in this situation? Take a look at what brands are actually designing and selling. What is for sale on their website and what do they have in their stores? You don't want to base your designs off of exactly what you see on the runway. You can use that as inspiration, but what you see on the runway, those designs don't sell. They don't ever actually go to market. That's not clothes that real day people buy and wear. So take a look at what brands are actually selling and do a few self-directed projects that are more commercially viable. This will show the brand that you understand their aesthetic and you know what types of things actually need to be designed for the end customer. So whether or not you have the opportunity to do an internship, you can get some more commercial, real life artwork in your portfolio. And this will help you stand out from all the other designers whose books are full of schoolwork. Now, if you do have the opportunity to land an internship, Later in the video, I'm gonna show you the number one thing you can do to turn that internship into a full-time job. But right now, let's jump in to tip number two. Send customized applications. To stand out from the crowd and to really get a brand's attention, you need to send a customized cover letter and a customized resume and perhaps even a customized portfolio to brands that you're applying for. You're gonna base this content off of the job requirements and you're gonna tailor each application to what they're asking you. This is where I scream really loud and clear. Do not send generic copy and paste resumes and cover letters to every brand you apply to. This is not a marathon to apply to 500 jobs out there. You will have 10 times, 100 times more success if you pick the top 10 or 20 jobs that you are really passionate about and you spend the time to send custom applications and resumes to those jobs only. And this is exactly what happened to Kirby Nunez in episode 72 of the Successful Fashion Designer podcast. He wound up landing his dream job at Puma because of this exact strategy. Now to start, Kirby had applied to every sportswear brand out there, Nike, Adidas, and then Puma. This was the category he wanted to work in, but he was sending generic application after generic application. He applied to Puma seven times. Six of those times, they gave him a big fat no, or he just didn't even hear anything back. But on the seventh time, he got a yes. So I asked him, what did he do differently from those other six times? And it was because he told Puma why he was interested in the job. He did research about the projects they were working on, the initiatives they were taking in the industry. And he told them why he was excited about those, why they were so amazing. And he showed them why his abilities and his strengths could help their brand do a better job at those initiatives and projects. He told them why he aligned for, with their brand and why he was such a great fit. So doing that customization in his application and his cover letter and his resume allowed him to get his foot in the door even after they had told him no six times. Another example of this came up on episode 29 when I interviewed Maylee Bingham. Maylee works for Philips Van Heusen, a multi-billion dollar lifestyle apparel company that owns brands like Calvin Klein and Tommy Hilfiger. And Maylee knows what it takes to get recognized amongst a sea of hundreds or thousands of applications. Here's the thing. Any brand that's using an electronic application process is filtering candidates via computer algorithms, which means your resume is getting scanned by a computer before a real person even sees it to decide if it's a good match. I'll let Maylee explain in her own words exactly how this works. You can't just 
apply like take the same resume and apply it to like 20 different jobs it's not going to work you have to take the time to read the job listing that they've posted somewhere find the keywords that they're looking for and then make sure those keywords are in your resume before you apply Mm -hmm. you know that's Mm -hmm. when, when it goes through it's not even a human being that's like printing them all out it's like a computer system that's looking for certain keywords and then if your resume has those keywords it's going to rise to the top and then hopefully you'll get a call out back but like i said if your resume or application doesn't have the keywords from the job description a real person is never going to see your application which is why it probably so often feels like your resume is going into a black hole my guess is that maybe you've been guilty of just copying, pasting, and not matching and tailoring your application to the job description. Now, does all of this take work? Yes, it takes work to customize your application, but I guarantee you, you will get 10, if not 100 times more the results and success if you take the time and put the effort in to do this. And if you are in the stage of trying to find internships instead of jobs, you can also use these strategies to do that as well. Because an internship is a great way to get your foot in the door and land a full-time paying job. I'm gonna tell you later a strategy you can use to do that, turn an internship into a full-time job. But first, let's jump to tip number three. Do something out of the box. How can you make yourself stand out amongst the competition? One example that Maylee Bingham from episode 29 did is to create a mini portfolio book in a physical form and mail it, yes, via the post office to the brand. Now, she used this strategy years ago to stand out and I think it resulted in something like five interview opportunities out of six or seven applications that she sent out. And of those interviews, she got two job offers. So does it work? Yes. And the reason is because if you stand out amongst the competition, brands recognize you. They see that you think differently, that you think creatively, and they notice you. Our inboxes are bombarded. We get so much digital content that doing something physical can really make you shine in a big way. Now, it doesn't have to be a mini physical portfolio book, but think about this, get creative. What can you do that no other applicant is doing to get that brand's attention? Because standing out and showing them that even in the application process, you go above and beyond is gonna show them that you are an exceptional worker, you are a creative thinker, and that's the kind of people that brands wanna hire. They'll realize that you really care instead of just hitting send, send, send on a kajillion generic resumes. So do your research, find out who the hiring manager or the design director is and send something directly to them. Don't send it to the HR manager. It's probably going to get lost. So do a little research. Go in the side door if you have to. Scoot around. Break the rules a little bit. It's okay. Again, does this take extra work? Yes, it does. But the fashion industry is competitive. And to stand out, you have to do the extra work. You will be floating automatically to the top of the competition if you do something creative and out of the box that no one else does. Now, I promised after the three tips, we would go into how to turn an internship into a full-time job. And that's exactly what I wanna share with you right now. There is one super simple but proven strategy you can use to do this. Once you have your foot in the door, you need to go 150% above and beyond doing an exceptional job and showing that brand, showing every person that works there why you're amazing. This is gonna help you create relationships and contacts, and this is what will lead to future opportunities. It's what I like to call doing the extra credit. So what exactly does that mean? Well, think of it like in school. What is the extra credit that you can do to go above and beyond? In the workplace, once you get your foot in the door, do that extra credit without anybody having to ask you. And in episode 72 of the Successful Fashion Designer podcast, Kirby Nunez did this exact strategy to turn his internship at Puma into a full-time design job. He still works there two and a half years later as a full-time paid designer. A couple of the things Kirby did to stand out during his internship, specifically, they were offering to help 
When someone went on vacation, answering their emails, taking over some of their workload. Once he was done with his assigned projects, he would go around and he would ask everybody, is there anything I can help you with? Is there anything I can take off your plate right now? In the meantime, he was noticing the other interns were sitting around bored, taking hour and a half extra long lunches, and really only caring about what they were assigned to do and not doing anything else. By him taking the initiative to ask for extra work, to do more, to offer more, he stood out in a huge way. The other thing that Kirby did and other people I've had on the show have done is to take specific initiative to see things that need to be done and ask to do them. Showing that you see where there's opportunity to help is gonna show that you're a huge team player and a hard worker. Simple examples are things like taking the initiative to organize the fabric and trim library so it's easier for the team to find the stuff that they need. Maybe it's noticing that the showroom keeps getting disorganized and things keep going missing. So maybe you create a spreadsheet and a tracking system to track all the inventory. Whatever it is, see where there's opportunity for improvement, to speed things up, or to just help someone do their job a little easier and take the initiative to do that. Not only will you shine in your internship and increase your chances of having it turn into a full-time job 10X, you will make tons of friends and contacts. The concept is very simple. If you make someone's job easier, they're gonna love you. They're going to remember you, and the next time they need to hire someone, whether it's at that brand or another brand that they work at in the future, they're gonna think of you. Now I know this can be a lot to digest. I handpicked the best content from over 75 interviews on the Successful Fashion Designer Podcast. And I know that it can help to hear more examples and stories of exactly how these designers use these strategies to get ahead in their careers. So if you wanna hear more about exactly how these strategies work, I've linked all the podcast episodes below in the description. I've also linked to the free ultimate guide on creating your fashion design portfolio that I mentioned earlier. This is a step-by-step -step guide that will answer all your questions on your portfolio. In the meantime, if you like this video, please subscribe and click the thumbs up. And for more free tips, advice, and tutorials for getting ahead in the fashion industry, head on over to SuccessfulFashionDesigner.com and sign up for the email list. I share tons of stuff there that you don't see on YouTube. I'd also love to hear from you. What change are you going to make to your fashion design job hunt from the advice that we talked about in this video? Let me know below in the comments. Another example for uh, getting ahead in the fashion in, bleh, industry, industry. As I told you, I pin.